when I was involved at that time, we kind of, you know, did a study and we found that the financial industry is one of the leading investors in computing, yeah, in technology by far, yeah, compared to other industries. And uh, I don't know if that has changed since I've moved out from the industry, but that's only a couple of years back. So I don't think it's changed that much. So that being said, now you're asking about what are the AI technologies and what are the analytics that's being used here? So if I tell you that when I was in the industry, we used to use a quantum neuro, psychological, biostatistical, quasi-autonomous machine learning algorithm. Does it tell you anything? You know, when we use these buzz buzzwords, they really don't mean anything, right? And AI, just, you know, people understand it differently, right? But uh, behind that, you know, people say there are all kinds of AI technologies. There are all kinds of analytics. But underneath all that, the fundamental idea is this, right? And, you know, the rest of it is buzzwords. It's good for marketing. And, you know, it's, uh, it's also good to get uh, interest. But behind all that, what we are trying to do in... Um, definitely in the financial services industry, uh, in other areas as well, is we are trying to detect patterns, right? You know, patterns in how our consumers do things, patterns in how different systems work, right? So for that, if you want to detect a pattern, what you need to do is you need to collect some data about it, right? What is happening to that? And then once you collect the data, then you try to see, and this is where a little bit of mathematics helps. So we try to use some mathematical model to see, oh, is this pattern being, you know, can this pattern be matched using this mathematical idea? So that's what we try to do. So we try to find a pattern, we collect data for that, and we use some sort of mathematics to see, you know, if we can match the pattern. And if, because if we match the pattern, then we can say what is going to happen next. The thing that has happened differently in the last few years and which people are saying, you know, calling it AI, big data, and all that is, we are using lots and lots of data. Right? We are collecting data about so many things. And the other thing that's also happening is we have enormous computing power. We have power computers are getting more and more powerful. So by doing these two things, what we're doing is we're processing lots and lots of data. We're also using better computing power, which means we can use more complicated mathematical models. So we are able to detect you know, patterns that we did not see before, right? So this hasn't changed in the industry, right? So now in terms of where it's being used almost everywhere, what has also happened is that people are using these things in almost every aspect of the financial service industry. Where there were people doing things before, now I think there is generally an algorithm that's helping the people. And in many cases, it's also, you know, doing things which are some simple things that people could do before they are being completely replaced. Because of the pandemic, most people are stuck at home and uh, you know, they're able to do all their banking services from home, right? That's clearly because of technology, right? And that's all these things. And that's FinTech behind the scenes, you know, banks deploying enormous technology that's making us do these things. But the one uh, problem or the issue that's gonna happen with the pandemic is, you know, there's gonna be some you know, job cuts and there's gonna be some economic strains. So because of that, again, I'm not exactly sure what the banks are doing right now, but if I had to make a guess, so if people are gonna lose jobs, then if they have taken out loans, they're not, they won't be able to pay back. So what the banks and other things will be trying to do is they, if, you know, they'll be trying to understand who has more capacity to pay back. So they will probably, they can, you know, they'll be trying to use it in, in that sense. Yeah, so it's about, they're trying to, use these technologies to see uh, which of their loan consumers have more ability to pay back and uh, they're going to try to you know use it to kind of negotiate different terms of repayment we talk about personalization again we talked about this before so that sort of answered there it is really about finding pattern let's say somebody's getting a paycheck every week they go to the bank every week and deposit in the bank right or they're going you know, it's a simple example. So then what happens is that, you know, if we're able to see this pattern, we know that when the person next shows up, this is what they're going to do, right? So we, you know, it allows the bank and the person or the whoever is handling that case, it allows them to know what they need to do, right? And clearly being prepared like that will go to the bottom line. When we, when we talk about intelligence, right? So, Intelligence is about making better decisions, right? 
And either a computer or a human being, it's about making those decisions. When we say we're making decisions, we are doing some kind of optimization. So simply, you know, we're trying, we have some resources, we want to use it in the best way possible, right? So when we are trying to observe behavior patterns, right? It is about trying to use it to some decision-making goal, right? So it is clearly very important. And as I said, here, you know, when we talk about banks phasing non-performing assets, right? They need to understand who is, you know, like take, when we say assets, these are bank loans we're talking about. So who's got those loans? And depending on their behavior, as we said, it then becomes possible for the bank to find ways to recover it and from whom and how much and so on. So all this will be helped based on the data they have collected. Artificial intelligence is a disruptor everywhere, right? It's going to change things, you know, in many things, the way things are happening because there is less human involvement, right? You know, this is, I think, best made clear with an example, right? Forget uh, artificial intelligence for the time being, right? Think about it as there is a, there's a manager. He's got a bunch of people working under him, right? So right now, or till recently, what used to happen was the manager was the human being and all the others, the people working on, under the manager's supervision, you can think about them as different artificial intelligence units, different algorithms, different models. Now, as these models start to get better and better, right? So then the manager has to do less supervision, right? That's the simple thing. So, and that is what is happening. Now, these models are starting to get better. So many of the things that required the manager to intervene, which in this case is the human being, is becoming lesser and lesser. So that doesn't, so what does that mean? So the role of the manager is going to change. It doesn't mean we don't need managers. We just need to find some alternative ways in which they can be useful, right? And the same thing is happening. So there'll be some disruption in terms of, you know, the nature of the jobs changing, right? Because there are many things that will be done automatically. Yeah. So it will be a disruptor definitely in many sectors, finance and elsewhere. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.